All right, we're going to do some more examples here. Jump quick to the PDF doc that is uh, listed in Schoology. And we're going to start looking at uh, section 2.2 and some of the other methods of displaying data that are in here. Uh, graphing quantitative data sets. And the first one we're going to talk about is what's called a stem and leaf plot. Uh, one of the problems with a histogram is if you just have the histogram, you know how many data points fell into your different classes, but you no longer know what the data points are. So uh, there's a couple of different display uh, methods of displaying data that can show you trends similar to a histogram, but also maintain the, all of the numerical data so that you know what your actual data values are. So we're gonna look at this example number one, constructing a stem and leaf plot. Following numbers are league leading RBIs, runs batted in for baseball's American League during a 50 year period. They ask us to display the data in a stem and leaf plot. Uh, what can you conclude? So here's the data set right here. And I've already taken the time to drop that data set into a Google Sheet. Uh, you can see it's here. I, I wanted to keep the raw data separate. So I've got a column here that lists all of the data and then I've created a stem and leaf plot. I already have it done here, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and we'll go ahead and do it again. And I'm gonna delete this column as well. So there we go. So here's our data list. And over here, I've just done a little bit of very simple formatting here. I know I'm gonna create a stem and leaf plot. So I, I like having this kind of like X, Y, this T table. Uh, type of format. And the way I did that was very simple. I highlighted these two blocks and went to the borders and gave them an underline, highlighted this column here, borders, gave it a right border. And then I just highlighted the whole thing that I, and again, I, I actually created the semi plot first and then did the borders, but it's a very simple concept on how to do it right here boxed it all in. So what I want to do is here's my raw data. What I would like to do is uh, sort this data. So I'm going to make a head a header here for sorted data. And I'm going to put that data in order. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this list of 50 data points and paste it right next to it. And then I'm going to go ahead up here to data and sort range column B from A to Z. I'm gonna put it in ascending order so that my data is now in order. So we're looking at our lowest value here is 78. Our highest value is 159. And we're gonna to need to go ahead and create stems and leaves for this data set. Uh, not a difficult concept. For the most part, you're looking at the last digit of your number as being your leaf and the remaining portion of it as being the stem. In this case, uh, we're gonna start with uh, seven as our stem uh, for our, our numbers that are in our 70s. And we know we go all the way down to 159, so we're gonna have to keep going down this list, 80s, 90s, 100s, 110s, 120s, 130s, 140s, and 150s. And it's important to note that even though we jump from 78 to 105, there's no 80s or 90s in this data set, we still need to have, represent that stem as part of our, I'm sorry, I got some, let's jump up here, as part of our stem and leaf plot. So let's go ahead and title this. Let's say that this is the stem and this is the leaf. Now it's really just a matter of transferring data from here into our stem and leaf plot. So we look at our 70s, we see that our only value there is eight. So we're just gonna type in eight. We have no 80s, we leave it blank. We have no 90s, we leave it blank. We look at our 100s and we see what we have. We've got five. And then we've got 108, so we'll put an eight. And then we've got 109 and it occurs one, two, three times. So we're gonna put the value of nine in three times. And we're just gonna continue on with that into the rest of our data. So our next group, uh, the 110s, we've got 112 occurs three times. So two, two, two. Uh, 113, we've got a 114. We've got a 116, a 117. We've got 118 and that occurs three times. 
and then we've got 119 occurs three times. And then we'll jump next to our 120s. I have a separate list of the data here that I'm looking at. So um, you obviously would have to scroll down. Um, we get down here, we see we start at 121. So I'm gonna put a one here, comma. And then I can, once I put some info in that cell and I could scroll down, it brings the cell with us so that we can continue to see that we've got one, 21 happens twice. We've got 122 happens three times. We've got 123. 124 happens twice. 126 happens, I think, five times. And we've got 129 happens twice. And we'll hit enter and it'll go ahead and bump that back up to where it belongs. The 130s, we've got 130, 132, 133, 133, 144, 149, and 149. It's our data for the 140s. Go down and double check that. I'm sorry, that's the 130s. <clears throat> Next, we have the 140s. We've got 140, 142, 0, 2, 144, 145 happens twice, 147, and 148. And lastly, the 150s, we only have two values, 155 and 159. And there we go, we've put the bulk of our information, everything we need for the stem and leaf plots in there now. Other things we need to have represented with a stem and leaf plot, we need to identify a key so that someone who's reading this for the first time knows how to read it, E. And we'll just pick, you can really pick any data value within here. Let's pick 105. And so we'll put in 10, vertical bar, five equals 105. And other than that, let's put a title, league leading RBIs. And uh, there we go. We've got a, a proper stem and leaf plot. It's in order. And uh, we've got a key and we've got a title. Uh, we're good to go. So there is no uh, chart per se, to insert a chart for a stem and leaf plot. It's not that I'm aware of at this time, uh, but we can still create a pretty good one here in Google Sheets by just utilizing the formatting for the borders, uh, using the sort function to sort our data. Uh, pretty effective. The second form of plot that is in this section is what's called a dot plot. Let me go ahead and delete my list there. So in order to do this, again, I've got my data list here and I have sorted that data in ascending order. And we're going to utilize Sheets' ability to do an XY scatter plot. We want to create XY coordinates for all of these, treating these as X values. And our Y values for those XY coordinates are going to be the number of times that that particular data value occurs. So you can see 78. I have associated it with a value of one. It only occurs once. 105 occurs once. 108 occurs once. 109, here's its first occurrence, second occurrence, third occurrence. And what that's going to do is on our X axis and an X value of 109, it's going to plot three separate data points, one at a Y value of one, above it at two, and above it again at three. And I've just gone ahead all the way down this entire list and done that. Every time a data value occurs, I start at one, two, three, new data value, start at one again. One, 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 one eighteen second time, one eighteen third time. And you can see that I've gone through this entire list and done that. Okay, not real difficult. From there, you see I already have it highlighted. I'm gonna click on my chart icon to insert a chart and I want to select an XY or a scatter plot. And you can see it has already put all of those data points. This one here being our 78 occurs one time, whereas some of our other numbers 
occur multiple times. We probably want to adjust this a little bit. It's already put a title in for us. Uh, we probably would want to stretch this out a little bit so we can get those data values spread out a little bit. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is this goes up to five. I'd like to give it a little more clearance on the top. So I would come down under customize and go to my vertical axis and change its maximum up. I know my mo most common occurrence was six times or five times. I'm going to make it six so it gives a little space. And, you know, there's a lot of other things you can do in here uh, with your chart and axis titles, your axes, you could spread it out, you could add more data points. Not all of that is really all that important. Um, let's see about our horizontal axis here, maximum value scale, now we move down here to grid lines. Take a look at that. Under grid lines, horizontal axis, we can make a, a step value spacing by step, we'll make it one, so everything's by one step. Um, I believe we can go in here and we can scroll down through this and add new 10. And then you're, you know, if we close this up and we go ahead and stretch this chart out, we'll get all our numbers represented there. And you can really get a good look at it. Um, there are other things you could do here. You could change background colors and whatnot to make it more visible. But the bottom line here is you want to have a dot on the chart for every single data point. So a data value of 112, you can see occurred one, two, three times. Our data value of 126, our most common happened one, two, three, four, five times. So this allows us to see trends in the data. Obviously this 78 was a very unusual year for a very low number of RBIs. Uh, 126 is, occurs fairly often. And you can see, for the most part, you can see where your data is concentrated and get an idea for uh, you know, what a typical number of RBIs would be for league leading in the American League during that time period. Not a difficult graph to create. Um, the last one that we really want to talk about in this section, we're going to scroll ahead here a little bit. Uh, you know, pie charts, definitely useful. You could definitely create those in Google Sheets. Um, all of these charts, you can create different ways to do it. The one I do want to talk about is this XY scatter plot. So I'm going to use this set of data that's right here. Length of employment in years, this is from try it yourself six, uh, versus salary in dollars. So again, I've already done it. I'm going to delete my chart. Uh, but the XY scatter plot is also fairly simple. We have our years of employment in column A, our salary in dollars in column B. This is an XY coordinate. It is very, very important when you're doing something like this that we keep this five associated with this 32,000. We don't want to go and sort this into uh, ascending or descending order unless we keep these numbers associated with the, the number that it's with in the first column. Uh, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and highlight this. Go up to our chart icon, insert a chart, and it's already selected for me to do a scatter chart because I've already done it. But if you need to, just hit the drop down, scroll down through. We want to do a scatter plot. And there it is. And, and this is very simple. We've got X and Y coordinates on here. We've got our title on here. It's really done everything we need it to do. But there's some things we could add that are important. So we're gonna click on customize. And under the drop down menu for series, we scroll down in here. There's one down here that says trend line. And that's a real nice one to be able to put in and, and Google Sheets will put it in automatically. If you're using something like a TI-84 calculator, then you'd have to go through what's called a linear regression. We don't have to do that here. It will add a trend line. That is an estimation, a best fit line for the data set that we have. If we go down a little further to that, it asks if we want labels. And it's right now it's at none, but I want to add a label. I'm going to label using the equation and it will give us the slope intercept form of our trend line or y equals you know, mx plus b slope and y intercept. So that's a real nice thing you could add. R squared is a what's called a correlation coefficient. It's a measure of how accurately the trend line and the data values match up. And we can see that we've got a correlation here 0.89. Obviously 1.0 is the best We've got a strong correlation here between our trend line and our data values. 
Uh, other than that, it's all just formatting, changing your titles, uh, however you need to, changing your axes, however you need to. Um, not a difficult concept. I hope this was helpful for these three charts. Do expect to have uh, some assignments posted tomorrow with new data sets. And I will share these two documents uh, with you so that you uh, have them to look at while you're watching the video, if you like. And thank you for tuning in.